Are we ready? Uh, I think so. Okay, then I'll call the meeting to order and we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mockler. Here. Graylo. Here. Smith. Here. TZ. Here. Hammond. Here. All right. Um, any conflict of interest declarations? Hearing none, um, we'll go on to the approval of the agenda with the addition of rescheduling um, the highway materials bid opening for the 14th of March. I move to approve. Thank you. Okay, it's motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. All right, motion, motion carries with the addition of uh, rescheduling the bid open. Um, approval of minutes. Move to approve. Second. Is a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Are there any visitors to be heard? Hey, no visitors. Um, so why don't we just begin with rescheduling? Um, we need a motion to reschedule the highway materials bid opening for the 14th of March for advertising reasons. I move to reschedule to the 14th of March. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion, motion carries. Um, <clears throat> Rod Polly, you're up. Talk about the Rural Infrastructure Access Grant Award to the Star Township. Yeah, I brought these to you. I don't know if it was after the first year or last fall. I believe it was last fall, but we had three townships apply. Uh, and really only one of them turned in, well, one of them turned in a very detailed grant, five-year plan and their grant. And we're waiting on, Garfield is waiting on our engineer um, to look at some used bridge sections we have to see if they could, could use them to fix their uh, project because theirs was up in the, well, I don't know, two hundred fifty three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 mark, and we only get like one hundred and forty. And Bethel is redoing theirs because that was pretty big, but I don't want to hold up Star waiting on the other ones, because they they dotted their I's, crossed their T's, they want to get the pipe ordered, get the guy lined up so when it can be done, to be done. So I guess, I don't know if it's on my recommendation or what, but I think we ought to approve their grant application. Um, it was for... Uh, $46,386.35 total. They are replacing a, we call them an old arch box culvert, probably built in the 30s. And they're putting a, a metal pipe in there. And of course, the financial guy for Stars Ron Peterson, he worked for the DOT for four years, engineer, so he figured out what they need. So I have no question, I mean, no problem, I should say, with with it. So I guess I would ask that you give them the uh, give them the grant. I was looking, I don't see a sheet that 
there must not be a sheet to for you guys to sign. It's just all verbal or Do you know, Carrie, is there a sign? I thought there was a sheet here to sign. Oh, right here. Maybe. Is this it? No, that's after it's done. I haven't seen anything Do that requires just, a signature. Apparently, you um, just approved it. I don't know, I'm not, this is the first one we've done, so I guess. Well, I think we can just approve it, and then we'll just make up a form to, to fill in the, you know, boilerplate so we can fill in the dollar amount later and or for the future ones, too, and place for their chairman to sign and place for ours to sign, just to acknowledge that the. Yeah, that's what they're looking for, so they can go forward to order that call, because it's, it is a larger culvert which they don't have on the ground. So they'll probably be three, four weeks out. And they go, they're not gonna be able to do anything for a while, but they just wanna get it in motion. And Ron's asked me quite a few times and you know, I was kind of holding off on Bethel, but too many board members in Arizona, so can't get it rewrote. <laughs> okay, well. So do we have a motion to award um, this uh, uh, application for 46386 and 35 cents to um, Star Township? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? I mean, this still leaves nearly, what, 94,000 for other townships that might qualify. Okay. Is this, uh... This is the application yet, right? Or is this the award? This is, this is the grant award. Okay, they are awarding it. Yes. Okay. That's that's what I'm asking for. Yeah, yeah to accept that award. Mm -hmm. Just for that one. Yep. Right, for start. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, the motion, motion carries. And I'll look at my packet at the shop and see if the state sent out a form that we use or we can come up with something. You might've said this, Robin, where's this culvert going? Uh, the- uh, 300th three, Street. Huh? 30, or 30, 30, 301st, two miles east of Wakan, two and a half. Yeah, Jim Williams lives okay. out in there and it's to the west of him. Okay. Um, <clears throat> bids. So it looks like we've got one bidder and um, for propane, and that is Butch's for 165.9. I'll move to approve a little bit. Second. Okay. Any discussion? I, I was just going through some of my old propane purchases back in 2010, and I bought propane that year for $2.56 a gallon. I think that's the highest I've ever paid. And there was another one that was just over two, like 204. So it's not as bad as it could be. No, no. Thank you for that context. <laughs> we contacted everybody on the list and we give them an hour. So it's fair to everybody. They have an hour to get back to us. Some of them never call back. Some of them we can't get a hold of, which is about the only one that gives us a quote immediately. Any further discussion? Um, all those in favor of accepting the bid? Um, Say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion, motion carries. And uh, we've got ditch board. Oh, right. I gonna... do have a question for Rod. If yeah. okay. Did we ever figure out if the townships can bank that money? Yeah, that I was going to tell you that. Sorry. Yes. So I said through that <clears throat> half a day class online and that you, you have four years. So okay. either you can give it to the township 
and they make it for four years, or you can keep track of it here and keep it for four years, but after the fourth year, it has to go somewhere. So what they said is if you have a township that has a big project, that if you keep it, don't disperse it to them, but you earmark it for them. And that fourth year, something comes up and they, it's not going to happen. Then you can divvy it out to somebody else on a different application. But if you give it to the township, then they, they have to do something no matter what. So I think it would be better if you, I, I really don't know how you do that. If you have a, plan or you know we keep track of how much comes out every year and then but they can wait four years to build it up what if we hold it for four years and give it to them do they get an additional four years hmm. that's a good question i don't i can't answer that because that they're trying to keep the money moving right. you know and every year they're hoping to increase a little more and we added a few structures to the map we're not going to increase that much but it will be a little bit more so yeah, i'm not sure i but i can find out so we should just hold on to that money for now then right mm -hmm. and same way with i believe um bethel they thought twenty five thousand was going to cover that but they don't even know what size of pipe they're going to put in you know they they just, well, you read it. It was really big. So I gave it back and said they had to come up with something better, you know. Well, why so, don't you use stars as the, the template? That's what I said. Just, and they didn't know if they wanted to go through that. They didn't know if they wanted to go through that much. Um, 25,000 reasons to do well, that that's much work. That's what I said. And I, to tell you the truth, I think they're a little under probably to get but... that fixed because it's a weird one and i don't know it's on two lines three lines of townships right in that corner so apparently bethel is in charge of it Larry, yeah. do we have to make a new account then for this type of work or uh yeah, i can't remember so it goes into like its own general ledger account if you're going to reserve it for specific purposes, then yeah, I think we'd have to create, you know, an assigned line assigned for, you know, Star Township or. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be a huge issue to do that. Shouldn't be too bad, no. If we had a, uh, it might be good, just in case we would have to have, uh, like say, Bethel would exceed their four years and. Uh, it would revert to us in our in our bookkeeping and we were to award it to Fairview or somebody like that. Uh, maybe we should have a master account for this these types of grants and then have a sub account for each township. And then we just merely move from one township to another at the point that it, it uh, times out. Yeah. Would that be yeah. the... That's what we'd be essentially doing so that you could keep track of which township was supposed to have you yes. know, X amount of dollars. Yes. And for that first allotment of money, there's only three townships that can, that, that's all I have not received. Five, every year they got to put in a five-year plan to show they're updating their stuff, which doesn't take much. But we only had three townships out of 12. 11, because I think one of them is not eligible, um, put anything in. And they are trying to change that opt out from like 50 cents to less than that, I think, or not even have to have an opt out. I don't. Think. So, yeah, they either had to have an opt out or they had to have the road and bridge levy for the 50 cents per oh, thousand. That's right, the 50 cents. And I heard they were trying to remove that, but I don't know about the opt out. Yeah, I, so you're right. I, it sure. was uh, the levy. Oh, there was so much that in that meeting. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure yeah. that this first allotment 
can they only go to Star Bethel or uh, Garfield? Garfield, Garfield yeah. yeah. I don't know why I keep thinking that's Pleasant Valley. But. Yeah. Well, I think that's the way we ought to handle it, in my opinion, is to have us sequester the funds for the four years. So do I tell Star that do we just cut them a check and send it to them? Or I guess, how do we proceed giving the money? They got to turn in receipts or... I don't know. Yeah, that, like I, mean, I said, first time is always a lot of fun. Yeah, that that's what makes sense to me is that, you know, it's essentially we, we would pay um their direct expenses. We would get we would get an invoice. You know, invoice, pay off the invoice. Okay. I'll I'll let Ron know. We would pay the invoice. Well, that's gonna screw up their bookkeeping. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean pay off the invoice to the township. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying. Yep. You know, they turn in an invoice, yep. we give them the money, yep. they paid yep. yeah. two yeah. north. So we that if, if they're able to do the, the job for half the amount, then, you know, we can reclaim that. We would release the funds as, as the township sends us proof of expenditures. Yeah, or proof, I guess. That. Yeah. So are we saying, though, that if it's more than 46300 and whatever, We'll, that's all we're approving for that township, though, right? Yeah. If it costs fifty-seven thousand, they're on the hook for the right. Okay. And if Ron has any questions, he'll be down. <laughs> but I'll pass that along. All right. Sounds good. Any any other questions or discussion? I have a couple. Okay. To be the bad guy in the room and everybody out there listening and uh, we're putting on low limits tomorrow saw it in the paper no so it uh they're leaking pretty bad south and they're starting to leak and the gravel roads are going to be our worst problem i think so union clay yankton and bono we're all doing it tomorrow so it's not just me, I don't do that anymore. I make sure I got some buddies that get some phone calls too. Because <laughs> my phone, I sent out a text to a few I know, and yeah, I got quite a reaction, different reaction back, but um, everybody knew it was coming. Yeah. My, and my it is the first of March. Hopefully we, hopefully we don't have to have them on too long, but I don't know. It's not looking that way this year. Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to weep too long. There's not enough moisture down there to weep. Yeah, there's a lot. But well, <laughs> it's, know, it's dry. Under well, water. I know. I know. But as soon as that rest of that frost goes out, it's going to be amazing how fast that dries up. Oh, I hope it does. Because we got, we have things we need to do too. And I can't, I can't do them till it comes off either. And then uh, just to let you know, our, uh, the gal we have working for us, she turned in her two weeks notice last Friday. So I'll be looking for, well, I already have one on the line for to replace her. So Are you talking Laura? No. Or oh, uh, an actual worker? Madison Dooley. No, she's got going to work for something to do with her degree. So, and that's unfortunate. She's very good. Employee, good truck driver, work every day. I hate to see them two go, but I, I don't blame her. She's trying to do something better. I think this winter might have been <laughs> first year of plowing snow, and she got broke it pretty good. Yeah. But anyway, so I got one on the line, so hopefully I get it filled within a couple of weeks here. Other than that, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ditch board. Is there a motion to go into motion ditch board? Motion to go into ditch board. Second. It's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, you have it. Take it away. We're in ditch board. We've got the Clay Creek ditch clean out from FEMA. Um, that engineer bill or 
Has to be. Yeah. Engineering okay. division. Good. It's thirteen hundred and well to date amount, one hundred and ten dollars. Yeah, that's yeah. it was only an hour of uh, field assistant work. Okay, well, it's just the billing limits, I guess. That, well, I was confused by the where it said remaining. So, but yeah, totals one hundred and ten dollars. So, move to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. All right. Anything else for ditch board? And just so you know, nothing's been done on Clay Creek yet. So the snow We're, is melting and yep. melting down pretty fast. We'll entertain a motion to come out of ditch board. Move to come out of ditch board. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We're in regular session. All right. Ina Peterson. Oh. About um, assessment information. And I should have hand got these out to in the minutes, but we've been really busy in our office. So, do you want to? Yes. Um, last year in the 2022 legislature, just made session. They passed House Bill 1325, which is a, a doing with the soil capability. And all the soils have different ratings and, and that. The soil cap capability of one, two, and three, it says, must be categorized as a crop land with crop land ratings. Five, six, seven, and eight must have the grassland rating. And when we started doing the mapping back in uh, like 1994, we were using a lot of actual use, which was still in our system. And now with all this new modernization that they're doing, they're seeing more of our records. So our field person says we have to do something. We have to get rid of it. And so the class four soils, we were, they either have to be all crop or all pasture of that soil type. And there was 11, we have 11 um, crop um, class four soil types in Clay County. Um, so in looking at what we were using as the use and stuff, most of them, the biggest percentage of the use was crop, which is what the, the um, soil rating that they did back in 1999, which is what we're using for factors right now. Um, they were all that except for there was one of the class fours that was a grass, which is still a grass rate. I left it as a grass rating, which it's only like it's less than 50 acres. And that, this is just class four I'm talking about. But, um, and then the MCA, which it on the sheet, it said it was primary use was crop. Well, most, I think all of it is down in this Southern part of the county right next to the river. And probably three fourths of it, if not more is just sand. So I put that in the, in the sand rating. And the other nine are all crop. So that's been a big project to get done, to go and do those. And the, the other thing that he, so there is gonna be some significant increases on some of those that were pasture that are now crop. And we can adjust them as you can see on the second sheet, but the state is pushing for us to get back to a pure productivity. They would like us to even get rid of all the adjustments, trees and stuff and start fresh, which is, was too much to accomplish in one year. 
So I hope to, before I get done next year, this in the summer, to at least have a good start on that or, and at least give them whoever takes over a an idea where they need to head. Um, and another problem that they found that we've done, when we started the mapping, they decided that they were going to do two acres as a building site on a farm. Well, in I don't remember what it started out as a dollar per acre value. And last year it was 45, 40. And our top dollar is just a little over 4,000. So, and there is something in statute that says we can't be over, we can't raise the, the value of the rating. So if, if the, the, the rating is 0.5 and the dollar value is $5, we can't raise that so it is $6. That's something you can't do. So I also took all those building sites out, which did, some of them went up and some of them, the values went down. And then, you know, a lot of, especially the older farms, they probably had 10 acres maybe, instead of just two acres of building site, which we did those as pasture when we did this originally. So a lot of that pasture I put to actual use. I was surprised when I'm doing this that, there was a lot of it that was in good crop ground that people were building their houses. There wasn't very many of them that were on pasture ground. So, but those, the actual building site itself went down in value because I don't, I don't think there was any in the top soil, but, um, so I, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to have a few appeals on that. So hopefully we can get them all ironed out at local boards, which probably means we're going to have to be going out and looking at this stuff because they want it documented. And some of these properties I have looked at the farm ground and stuff, but that was back when we first started the mapping. And there's been a lot of trees and stuff tore out of places that they're farming over now. So I, I think it's a good thing, but it's going to take some more work. So, um, but, and then um, talking about non-ag properties, um, we raised all the non-ag land 10% this year. And all the houses went up 10%. When I started doing the sale study this year, we were at 68%. We have to be at at least 85. After all those adjustments, we're at 85.1. <laughs> and I, there's just, I don't know how to raise them anymore. I mean, I'd at least like to not get killed before the end of the year, <laughs> before I retire. <laughs> so I just wanted to. <laughs> you and Rod could sit next together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I just wanted you guys because hopefully assessment notices are out in the mail this weekend. We're working vigorously to get them all in because you know every parcel has changed. And last year we didn't have use, when we were using TerraScan to value, we would have, we had a program that downloaded them into Bossa Nova. Well, last year we thought we were going to go with T-Tech, so we didn't have Patty, we didn't spend the money to have Patty do it. Now, that's probably not gonna happen, but so we're still hand entering. I don't know how soon T-Tech is going to write us a program or if they are, so, but. So if you, if somebody puts farm ground to, to grass, you're still considering it farm ground or a cropland? Well, it has to be, be what that, so the last soil types of it, soil writing is. If it's supposed to be a crop soil, okay. then that's the rating it's supposed to be. Which, and I only dealt with mainly the, the places that had building sites and the class four soils, because that the class four soils is what they're gonna check this year. Because we have to send them, now with their modernization program, 
we send a, had to send them a copy of our map and all that and stuff. So, so they're just watching us more and more. So, any questions? So, so then, then uh, you made the determination on class four that that is all of those are crop right, except for the D and D okay. and MCA, okay. because D and D was a grass on that one, but the MCA it's That's the highlighted ones. Yeah, the class fours are all highlighted. Okay, all right, thank you. So, but yeah, so there is going to be some that some did raise significantly. I mean, but then there's others that went down because of it. And um, if if someone does anybody have crop in classes five, six, seven, or eight, or yes. And and so are those classified as grass? Mm -hmm. or not as not as yet. There it was just too big of a project to do for one year. Okay. Because they just didn't. It just became a law in, in on July first. So, but that is what my plan is to get them going before I retire on getting everything to their true class and whatever. So, there won't be much. With okay. what you're describing, sure. Okay, so there's, so there's just a little bit in those yeah. classes that are crop, and those the your eventual goal is to get those classified as crop for assessment right. purposes. Right. But that's just a bit of a project. Go ahead and just make it. Yeah, everything easy. takes time. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, but okay. Anything else? Anything else? Hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, that, thank you. Oh, sounds yeah. sounds thank complicated. <laughs> A long, long and difficult task. Um, all right, next up on the agenda is the Clay County Master Transportation Plan. And um, so this would be the plan that Dick Hammond and I worked on um, along with uh, <clears throat> DOT uh, folks and um, uh, engineering folks and for uh, quite, quite a long time. Um, and uh, the the appropriate motion is to accept the plan. Um, and uh, move to accept the master transportation plan. A second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Um, and they've made their presentation to us some time ago, and um, <clears throat> it hasn't changed substantially except in its technical aspects since then. So I'll look good to you, Rod. Yeah, I looked at you. Yeah. And yes, to my eye, it looked fine to me. So yeah. They they got rid of a few of those bridges and the other questions you had, I believe, that I could see anyway. Yeah. Did we still have a gray area on the bridge or approach to bridge down here on yeah that's still just on account it was a different engineering firm right same thing we're having with our five-year plan and the big program yeah not having the same engineer inspect them that's doing our plan so they had to come back and get all my information because dot won't give out the other engineering firm, even though they're no longer in business. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's pretty well cleared up anyway, yeah, I, in your opinion. Yeah, my opinion. I think. Yeah. Any other questions or discussion? So this goes along with the next one we're gonna discuss also, right? Cause they're using that master transportation plan. Yeah, trails and all that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, there's no further discussion. All those in favor of accepting the <clears throat> master transportation plan signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries. Um, <clears throat> so now we've got resolution number 202305, and that is the um, resolution to allow the chair to sign the 
grant application for the um, DOT. It's a US DOT raise grant. Um, and you had all gotten a, a link to the proposal and I, Jeffrey's been working on that. Yeah. So if you wanna- I'd be happy to introduce it. So it's, um, this came to our attention just uh, like basically last week, I think that there was a little little buzz about it the, at the end of the previous week. Um, I want to thank Eric Amberson. He's uh, with uh, District 13. It's not District 13 COG. Uh, they have a different term, but essentially that's how, that's how I've been referring to him. Um, found this grant opportunity. It's a, a major federal grant opportunity. I think it's something that we should make sure that we're uh, looking at with a longer time frame for next year. Um, it's broadly applicable. There's a lot of different sort of transportation, um, construction and planning things that we can do with, um, with grant funds like these. Um, there'll be most likely a lot of funds available next year. So this is funded primarily through the bilateral uh, infrastructure law uh, at the federal level. Eric noticed it because uh, there's been discussion about trails in our uh, uh, both bike and pedestrian trails in our uh, transportation plan and then also in Yankton's transportation plan. Um, there was a lot of interest on this end. It uh, aligns with things that have been coming up with the Clay County Park Board. There was a strategic planning session there um, and the idea of more trails and better connectivity of trails connecting to population centers came up there as well. So this funding is available. It was an incredibly short time frame, but um, the National Park Service, Harrison Freund at the National Park Service, um, uh, both CCOG and uh, and District 13. Um, so uh, Sophie, I see up there, thank you. Um, just an amazing amount of work. Uh, I think the meeting was Wednesday <laughs> where we began organizing on this. And by Friday, we had a mostly complete uh, grant application with buy-in from all sorts of different agencies. I think that we had something like 14 letters of support last I checked. Um, that's from places like USD, um, Yankton County Commission. So we would be, we're passing this resolution today. The deadline is actually like 11.59 tonight <laughs> to submit this. So um, so we have a meeting. Um, it has a lot of benefits for our county. So we, we need to pass the resolution so we can submit it. But really, we'd be partners in the grant with, with Yankton County. So uh, the grant funds... Uh, the goal of the grant funds would be to fund uh, planning, really very comprehensive long-term planning for pedestrian and bike, so intermodal trails um, throughout all of Yankton and Clay County. So that's not saying trails that are everywhere in Yankton and Clay County, but, um, but planning for the most uh, efficient, uh, sensible, practical, um, you know, what, where are the corridors where trails can be built? You know, where are we going to meet resistance that's, uh, that, that can't be surmounted? Um, where is their excitement? Um, the idea would be to connect some of the smaller, uh, smaller population centers. Um, so, you know, like Meckling, uh, you know, thinking about those and not just thinking about Vermilion and Yankton, uh, and then reaching out to some of the great resources we have um, surrounding those population centers. So we've got Spirit Mound, we've got North Alabama Bend, we've got um, uh, all these uh, interesting public lands that are administered by different agencies. So um, I think uh, some of the goals on the federal level are to uh, increase non-motorized transit options um, to do economic development. So something like this could be a tourism draw. It could increase the property values of homes that are that are near any of these trail systems. Um, so uh, the ask is for $1.3 million. Uh, that's based on uh, I think about, I think it's 65 miles of, of corridors to be explored at about $20,000 per um, per mile um, of, of funding available for that. So uh, there's a lot of details um, in the grant packet. I hope the other board members have had a chance to, to take a look through it, but um, it is not a matching grant. So if we got it, um, this would be 100% uh, federal funds paying for these things. We'd be offering some in-kind donations such as maybe meeting space, um, staff for some planning and public input um, sessions, but we wouldn't have to put any money uh, into this planning process. And uh, so, yeah, I'm very excited about it. I'm very impressed by all the, the work that uh, they went into uh, putting it together so rapidly. I think that since there were so many professionals <laughs> willing to put in their time, um, even just the 14 groups that wrote us uh, uh, letters of support with like a two-day turnaround, I think it really looks like something that is really uh, broadly yeah, beneficial and has a lot of buy-in from a lot of a lot of our partners. So, yeah. 
Yeah, and and I when we get when we get to the um, you know after the planning stage is over, I think the idea is that um, it, we would we would take we would be the lead, but there would be many partners actually um, doing doing the work. So the National Park Service um, is really excited about this. Um, State Game Fish and Parks is really excited about this. It doves tail, dovetails into um, a lot of um, uh, of partners in uh, in in this area. At the same time, um, just the week before, I had been talking to Jim Peterson at um, the Chamber Development Company. They wrote a very enthusiastic letter. Um, they have plans to make a map, a sort of outdoor recreation map um, of this area, really as a as an economic development strategy. Um, because, you know, we, we have so many amazing resources, um, you know, amongst our, our two, our two counties. So they, they were very, very excited about the economic development possibilities of a, of a kind of regional, regional trail system. And that, you know, up until now, I mean, I, I see these recreational trails grants constantly go by and because we don't have a plan, we can't apply for them. Um, but but once a, a plan is in place, it puts us in a position to, along with our partners, apply for recreational trail money that's available every year. Um, and, and some of it actually goes unspent. Um, yeah, and I think uh, this, you know, this would hmm. not be something that would be likely to produce a plan that would then, uh, you know, suddenly be implemented and we would build 65 miles of trails. It's something that would lay the groundwork for understanding, you know, where where could they be and then probably be a framework that for many, many years in the future could be could be gradually built off of. So, so I, um, I would move that uh, that we accept this resolution. I'm not sure exactly the right wording for that, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, resolution 202305. Well, we've got some questions on this. So, well, I don't, you need a second first. And then we, we can discuss. discuss. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll give a second. Yeah. So, so this is, um, this is just our approval for um, the planning stages. Is this correct? Yeah. yeah. So to get the grant. Yep. Yeah. And just an approval for the not costing us any money. That's correct. 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 Okay. And, so, it's, and it's both for our county and Yankton County. And they've already approved it? Yeah. So everybody's approved it, but the last. I was a little point. surprised. One thing I saw that it wasn't quite correct, maybe, said CCOG was the drafter of the, of the deal. Uh, yeah. yeah. It wasn't CCOG, wasn't it? Wasn't it District 3? It was both in partnership. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, it, the National Park Service Park Planner um, actually did a lot of the, the sort of base work and then CCOG um, and um, Eric um, uh, from, from uh, Yankton's COG did right. some of the drafting. And then <clears throat> technically CCOG is actually going to this afternoon, if we approve it, is going to, um, you know, hit the, hit the send button um, because Carrie and um, Sophie Johnson have worked out a deal where CCOG can submit the grants in our name. So and, and I, I've got no problem, but I, I, I'm curious on, you know, if this, even they're planning this, right? Or they're gonna give us a plan or whatever we're spending money for. We're gonna make a trail from basically Claytown Park to Yankton. Is that the long-term goal? Well, see, I think that that's something that I really like about this is it does not specifically say, you know, we're, we're going to plan exactly. the trail system. This is, this is saying um, what kind of trail system makes sense. You okay. know, a question that this, if this funding, so right now we're just resolving to submit the application. We don't know if we got it. If we got that, that would be August or September. And then that would begin a process where we would explore questions like that. Does it make sense to have a trail from Clay County Park to Yankton? Does it make sense to have a trail from North Alabama Bend to, uh, I don't know, yeah, uh, Vermillion or something like that. So so wh where where would these trails, I mean, I know we, we can't say we're not planning this at this point, mm -hmm. but 
how are we going to get from point A to point B? Well, so like some of the things that are discussed in some of the documents are, you know, using, uh, possibly using road right of ways, you know, mm -hmm. possibly building a bike lane, you know, maybe just extending shoulders. So we've got a safer, like on Timber Road, maybe that's, that's what makes the most sense. You know, I think that yeah. uh, people might like to bike from Vermilion to Clay County Park. So, so right now they may widen the road. To make exactly. Sense. So this would be like, what would that cost? What sort of, you know, do we need to get easements to, to put a trail through somewhere? Is that feasible? Um, you know, it would, this would fund um, things like public planning sessions where people could come in and say, um, hell no, I have a sorry on the record there, but <laughs> I, I do not want a property, a, a trail anywhere near my property, you know, and it would well, get that, that that's input my concern into it. Sort of yeah. Well, yeah. so, in the master transportation plan, I don't know if you saw there. No. So there's trails that go from here through Spirit Mound all the way to Wakanda. Okay. Just follow that uh, through Norwegian Gulch. What do they call that, Crick? Through down the Lodi area. Or... Is it the Norwegian Gulch? Uh, that, okay. Well, That's one of them. One follows the Vermilion River all the way to Centerville. And okay. there's another one that takes you into Beersford. One heads towards Yankton. So I would assume that's some private land. Yeah, it, it's all through private land. And that's my biggest problem with it. Um, that would be my problem. Because we're, I mean, we can sit here and say we're not spending any money, but unless some private investor gave us the money, we are spending tax dollar money. And it's a million, a little over a million dollars yeah. on a feasibility study. And which, we can't even finish the road we're trying to start. Definitely low end of, of these grants. You know, they were, they were talking about uh, yeah, they they go they go way up from 1.3 million. That's, That's fine, uh, but I mean a feasibility study. Yeah, and then is eminent domain going to be able to be used to make these trails possible? No, and I, I, I you know that that really is a is more a political question, and yeah. we kind of know the way that that would go out front. Um, I think that's a piece of that's that's the feasibility question, right? That they're looking at is, uh, you know, what's 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 the likelihood of success of various connecting strategies. Um, so, and uh, we have Sophie on, online too. If if you know if we have any technical, I questions think we should have one clarification too. Is that uh, Travis said it would all be on private land? That's not true. That's not. There's true. a number of routes like say down Burbank Road accommodate but the spin, routes he talked about crowd. that's on the on the map now um no no if it there followed was, the vermilion so route. on yeah. that transportation plan other than spirit mound and clay county park and alabama bend that is all private land yeah and i i think there's a big difference between the master transportation plan and this study yeah. and the main difference is that the master transportation plan was really looking at you know it was taking like a 30,000 foot view of how could we connect things. This would take a much, much deeper dive into what's possible and what's feasible. And, you know, I think we we, we all know that un unless you've got a, a willing participant, um, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to go across private land. But that's the kind of thing that these folks will look at. They'll look at where's where's the low hanging fruit um, and it probably is in road rights of way. It's along, you know, for hiking trails. I mean, they were even in, in the discussions that we all had, we were even talking about the possibility of, for example, um, a trail between Spirit Mound and Clay County Park that would be along gravel roads that are seldom used. And it would basically be signage with, you know, maybe a, a interactive cell phone program where you could click on something and say, this is you know, th th here's what the journals of Lewis and Clark said to describe the wild plums, uh, you know, on August 25th when they walked on this location. So I, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a, this, you know, the master transportation plan was a very 30,000 foot view of what's possible, um, you know, in, in our wildest imaginations, but this is a deep dive into what could actually be accomplished um, by this group group of partners, um, you know, and and uh, Harris and Fine is the the park planner for National Park Service. He said, you know, we we take a long view of these things. It might be fifty years before this trail is system is actually completed, but you know, we wouldn't have national parks if people weren't thinking fifty years ahead. So it, you know, I think it is something that we do for future future generations.
So my question also, and, um, and I'm talking about <coughs> one trail that you brought up, Sunny County Park to Spirit Mountain. 19 already has a designated walking bike path, whatever. We talked Timber Road. So I'm assuming we're gonna have to widen Timber Road, correct? Well, that would be if, if, if a bicycle trail were created. The yes. trail that I was talking about would actually be on existing gravel roads where we already have a right of way. And so it wouldn't go down 19 because most people don't wanna walk along 19. Um, you know, I'm part of a there, there, that was designated by the state as a bike path, correct? Yep. So, our our gravel roads can we do that with our gravel roads, even though it's our right of way? Can we do that without liability? Could I make a comment? Sure. Please. Hi, this is I'm Eric Ambrosen with District Three over here in Yankton, uh, right across the border there from you. Um, I just wanted to answer your question, going back a little, a few minutes. Um, you know, you're talking a lot of, a, a lot about the planning that's going to go into this this project, um, but obviously, you know, we're we don't know anything, um, you know, at this point. That's that's why if we're awarded the the funds, um, a, a group is going to be put together um, to develop like a like an RFP for a professional firm to come in and explore all of these all of these strategies or all of these alternatives. Um, and so that's the point where you're going to have a lot of your questions answered about, you know, um, crossing private property, um, sharing right away, um, new, new trail construction. Um, what we're sending in is a proposal that really does, it's really kind of like throwing out a net and casting it wide. And, and then once we reel it in, we'll know more about what we have. And so, um, I wouldn't necessarily worry so much as a as a commission about you know what's going where or you know who's going to be affected. I mean, we'll we'll get those questions okay. answered, um, you know, through the planning process. That's that. That's exactly. How can we not worry about where this is going to go in the future? Because if we're going to make Timber Road wider for a path, whose responsibility does that become? Does that become Rod's issue after it's in? Do we pay for that widening? Well, that's and that would be again. That's another discussion for you know, or a question for the consultant um, that would eventually come up with this plan um, that, uh, and, and for sure, when, when we write the RFP, we'll definitely want to have uh, a responsive firm that knows how to handle all of those issues like maintenance and, and land ownership and those kind of things. So yeah, I mean, let's worry about it. That's for sure. But um, that the planning process will be the time to, to get all those issues out on the table. But that's after we've already spent a little over a million dollars. No, that's what the million dollars are spent on. Yeah. That's what it's for. You're going to get some answers to questions that we're asking now after we spend a million dollars. We don't spend the million dollars. Do you pay that's taxes? <laughs> Anybody who pays yeah. taxes is paying for this. That's true. Yeah. And this is, I mean, we can't even get funded to finish the road that they were promised to finish two years ago. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to spend an extra million dollars. And we can call it government money from Washington. Yeah. But it's a waste of funds because the feasibility of this, I mean, and if we're going to go down gravel roads, we don't need a study. Those roads are already there because I know what the private property owners are going to say. And quite honestly, I, I, uh, I'm not so sure um, how, you know, all of the various links and legs of these trails um, were added to the, to the uh, proposal other than, I guess, when, when we first heard about the you know the National Park Service office here in Yankton wanting to look at a uh, a connecting trail between Yankton and Vermilion. Um, in my mind, all, all I thought about was a a trail that would parallel the the, the riverbank. Um, so I don't know if I mean I I don't know if any of these other links will you know, make it to the final proposal, other than they are, you know, they're included as alternatives or possibilities. And, and yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from. Um, it's definitely, there's a lot of funds in there, there's a lot of money. Um, but uh, I guess you'd say that, you know, we, we're going to get our answers as we spend the money, or when we spend the money. How, how many private owners, if we parallel the riverbank, would we deal with well, I don't have a plat map in front of me, but you're, you know, you'll be dealing with uh, 
um, quite a few. Um, so you know, the the twenty five percent of them agree. Twenty five percent say no. Then it becomes an issue. Are we? Is somebody going to want to throw an intimate domain in there? Yeah, I think, well. I think that's what this the study would come up with. I mean. That's what the engineers would do. They would figure out if you'd have imminent domain issues. They would say what path is feasible and what path is not. Um, I do just want to add a comment that as of today, there's 21 letters of support for this project from um, organizations in both Yankton and, and Vermilion and the surrounding areas. So I think there is a lot of good general support. I believe it, and I'm in support of this too, but I'm I'm being realistic. That farmer's not going to give up his river, his hunting grounds for people to walk through it. And that's and that's the point where, you know, again, we're not, I'm not a lawyer I, and I, or an engineer, but um, that brings into the, the question in the plan or the, you know, the, the study, um, you know, the, the issue of easements, um, access, and, you know, there, it could very well be that, uh, the route of this trail along the river, and I'm just going to use that as the kind of the base example, you know, it may, it may detour around a property, you know, and, and not necessarily be within a hundred feet of the river. Um, but I don't know that right now. Um, and that's what an engineer or, a, or a consulting, uh, landscape architect could, could tell us. Um, and I'm sure, you know, if one is hired, that's one of the things they're going to look at is, you know, dive deep into is land ownership and see, you know, what do those deeds look like along the river? I think that's part of what this study is, is to come up with is what would be a feasible, feasible plan one way or another. I, you know, I could not tell you, I've been on the closest road to the river all the way from Yankton to North Sioux. Yeah. I've, I've been on every one of them but I could not tell you what would be a viable plan and how many, I, uh, one of the things they'll, this study would do is go in, and interview landowners and we'd have an idea who would be willing and who wouldn't. And, uh, and we need to how can we work around those? For that? Probably. That, because yeah, by that, the time you get out and do uh, interview every, every I, landowner in that group, I can have spent a lot, a lot of money. And get this straight is I'm not against a nature's trail system, sure. but I'm being realistic. Do you think, Dick, these farmers are going to let this happen? There's a lot of them that are going to say no, no way. Uh, back when we were discussing the Clay County Master Transportation Plan, I brought up the uh, example up at uh, Platte Geddes, is that there was a similar proposal to use the uh, railroad line uh, that's now abandoned, no rails on it. It's just a grassland. And great uh, idea. They brought, a, they brought along the to the county commission that uh, idea of building a, a hiking, biking trail on that grade, on the railroad grade. And uh, the commissioners ended up with several landowners that were adjacent. They, the landowners didn't even own that right away, but they just owned land that was adjacent to it. And they came and said, no way, we don't want you to be doing this. So yes, uh, well, you're you're, you're going to interrupt not in, hunting grounds, not in my backyard. Farm ground. Well, that's what it is now. It was, I've used I've used the corridor up in Charles Mix County is, is hunting ground because mm -hmm. it is land that you can uh, legally hunt. Yeah, but but, these, but the guys I can, I that, can see these understanding these property owners not wanting that. adjacent adjacent landowners. That's what they brought up was that the, these guys are using that land now uh, for hunting. And uh, they're shooting shooting birds that go over onto our property, and then they trespass trespass onto our land legally because you can set your gun at the at the fence and go in and retrieve your bird and get back. And they're just saying, how much worse is that going to be with these guys going up and down with their bikes? So that's how basic the NIMBY uh, issues can get. I I've actually visited with uh, I I was involved with that group. Uh, uh, working on that rails to trails project pretty, pretty heavily. And that, yeah, that's very, very much the story um, where, you know, like in a lot of cases that trail, you know, along the railroad right away, um, that's owned by the state. Um, right. 
what the the idea you know the issue there is yeah you've got you've got farm ground on both sides of the trail that uh you know again people had had concerns about you know a bunch of you know a million bikers you know going you know riding bikes through their property um you know and, and uh you know how are they going to leave it when they when they go through um and so i you know again the vision you know the little picture i have in my head is um if this plan for a, a riverside trail can work out you know at the at the worst maybe we're dealing with you know just you know owner issues on one side of the trail um where the other side is a little more public but that's it's a it's it's a I would think it'd be easier to work out on this type of thing, but uh, I don't know. It's uh, there's obviously the same kind of issues. And, and you know, I, I think I'd throw out there that uh, I 100% agree, agree that there are certainly landowners in, in our county and in Yankton County that would just categorically be opposed to a trail crossing their property or being adjacent to their property. But I also 100% know that there are landowners that would be excited about it. And there's landowners that with monetary compensation for an easement that would sway them they'd say you know right now that grove of trees along the edge of my land i'm not you know i'm not farming because it's got a gully in it no farmer is going to take monetary compensation for his land for a trail no like not i mean in the in the document here it says cropland is the least desirable place to put a to put a trail you know that that's a part of this application and saying you know that that's so not where we're going to try to put and this, I, you know you're, i'm not saying i'm against this i'm saying what are we going to do we got people that say all right no problem go crop my land what are we going to do with the people that say no i think that i think that this i mean i think that in in the discussions uh you know that i see in here you know the language i see in here like one of the things that they'd be exploring is easements so i mean i think that there would be the the you know discussion of of appropriate compensation and if somebody doesn't want to take it then they don't want to take it but right. at this then, point i don't think we even have to do that's think, my question yeah. then, then, you work, jeffrey, then you work around oh eric were you gonna well like like jeffrey mentioned earlier you know so some of the in-kind contributions you know by the county um would be for uh meeting space and so um public meetings public hearings that will be a a, a very big part of this process and so you know, it's going to be those forums that you're going to you're going to air out all of these issues. You know, and might it might take uh, you know uh, a meeting at uh, you know like there at the courthouse, or may take a meeting at uh, uh, you know Toby's in Neckling, or or a meeting in uh, Gayville. You know, and, and making sure that everybody has a chance to to be heard um, about uh, those issues. So that would be, uh, I think. When you talk about you know how are we going to deal with that you know that's obviously you know we'll we'll hear about it in those public meetings and um and a, a good a good consultant would uh develop a, a strategy or a or a or a response to that uh that issue but it could yeah, who knows maybe this thing might just fall flat on its face you know but we we won't know if we don't you know plan yeah, and and usually there's a, a what 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 uh, consultants do, engineering consultants is they work they 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 work on workarounds, trying to figure out okay, so if this landowner is really opposed, is there where 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 are there some alternatives, or maybe there are trail plans that are completely abandoned um, as a result of the feasibility study in favor of doing other other trails. Um, that are are more feasible. So, I think when this study is done, we'll be able to see clearly what's um, what's the most likely trails to happen. Um, what are the least likely? And you know, some, sometimes land comes up for sale for other reasons, and you know, it's it's possible to uh, um, you know to obtain easements yep. that you never and expected you'd get. Um, we we talked about the the timeline of all this and. You know, if if it's determined at the end of a couple of years that uh, you know there are feasible trail sections to be built, um, so even beyond that, you know, you're looking at probably several phases of construction. Um, you know, we we talked a little bit about you know if if it is all feasible that you know uh, one one uh, one segment begins in Yankton at uh, you know Paddle Wheel Point, you know maybe the other one begins at uh, at Clay County Park. And we meet in the middle, kind of like the Transcontinental Railroad. Um, but how many phases is that going to take, and how many years is that going to take? I'm thinking 
Um, I'll be golfing in Arizona by the time uh, that it's all done. But okay. well, good thing to plan for the future. One more concern that I'm going to voice and I'll shut up. So we get this grant, we do the feasibility, we're, we've got trails, trails that are, everybody's like, okay, we're good with this. Are we paying for those trails? And in the long term, we're maintaining those trails. Is that, is that a correct statement? That um, we have to pay for the construction of the trails. So that's where we would come back to the, to the table with these raise funds. So ra the raise program has funds for construction and, and planning. So um, that's where I actually, uh, at the later hour here, this whole process, I, I mentioned to Harrison at uh, National Park Service that there is planning dollars available. But anyway, we would probably come back and use the, the consultant's findings um, or the, you know, the cost estimates from the study to then apply for uh, construction dollars um, to actually build the trails, and um, through the through the planning process, I would hope that we would have you know we would understand uh, how much and who would would take care of uh, the, the maintenance of a trail. And uh, you know, I could see you know there's like with other trails uh, like the the Mickelson Trail in the Black Hills, there's a there's a, a nonprofit group uh, that kind of acts as the the shepherd or the, the the steward of that trail, and they you know, they raise mon money for, you know, for maintenance and those kind of things. So that'd be an issue that yes, but uh, somebody has got to be responsible for maintaining it. So how can we do it? And, and um, how can we, how can we ease any kind of burden on local government, whether it's the county or the city, um, you know, Clay County, Yankton County. Okay. I just wanted to raise my concerns. And, you know, I'm not against it. I'm just voicing my concerns. No, those are fair. Fair Are we the only one signing a resolution? Yes, we would be the lead. You have to have one lead, and we would be the lead. Um, so those, I mean, that's when you're saying those 14 other letters of support. 21. 21. Yeah. 21 well, I thought yeah. she said 14. So 21, none, they don't have any skin in the game. I mean, they can support all they want, but they can back out at any time, and our name is on it. And I don't think the city gave, the Vermilion City gave us a letter of they did. Right there. Yeah because it never went through city council. So I don't know how they could do that. Well, we, um, John Cole wrote a letter. They're not committing money at this point. So they, it would necessarily need to be uh, an action of the city, you know, the city council. Um, and so that's basically, yeah, more of uh, moral support at this point. Um, and since it is a non-matching grant, um, you know, there really wouldn't have to be any skin in the game from any, any other local government entity. Um, but when it comes time to construction, yeah, then we're going to probably start weeding out organizations and people that uh, you know want to contribute. Still spending a lot of money for questions we don't know yet. There's a lot of big <laughs> questions that are being asked. And... Big questions that that uh, are going to cost money to answer. Nobody just well do it right. Nobody spends that kind of money with a boy. I hope it turns out right. Yeah, and this was this came on kind of quick. Yeah, yeah. And you can blame me for that. But it, it doesn't matter how quick it come on. It doesn't seem like you'd be able to answer those questions until we spend the money. The it'll, be, it'll, it'll be two years before we know, um, you know, the, when the plan's all done. I don't, I, 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 let me preface I, this too. Oh, go ahead. Time doesn't bother me. It's the million whatever dollars that we have to spend to get those answers. I mean, the money's already spent when we when those questions are asked and answered. Well, the questions are asked, they're just not gonna be answered. Yeah, until the you money's spent money. to answer those questions. That is that is a terrible philosophy. I don't know of any of the five of us who would do anything like that. Give me your money and I'll answer those questions later. Might not be the answer you want, but at least I'll have your money. Do that when I go to the doctor. <laughs> it's like I think you, you, you do that. How much did how much have we spent so far on the HVAC project just to get the the to find out what the questions are and what the answers are? Very little. We're what talking one building. <laughs> what concerns me is we know the answers pretty much from some of the questions we have. I think what we get for um, 
the federal money at the end of the day is a feasible plan um, with uh, costs attached to it um, that we can, in concert with our government and nonprofit partners, um, move move ahead with. Um, you know, I, I, I think one of the more exciting letters I saw was from Dakota Hospital Foundation that focuses on um, improving health in the community. And, and we, we do know from research that, uh, you know, when you, when, when you build this kind of recreational opportunity, um, it increases the general health of your population and it decreases certain um, health costs. And I, you know they they they're they're, they're looking for um, you know this 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 kind of initiative to support to create a healthier a healthier community. I totally totally agree with that. Can I just make a couple of comments real quick or final comments? I got then I got to jump off. Um, um, you know that's a lot of the great trails in in our state and in our in around the country. You know the the Mickelson Trail, the the Cowboy Trail in Nebraska, uh, and and other other trails like that. They all started with a plan. Um, I couldn't tell you exactly how much they cost, but uh, yeah, it's kind of like it, those are those are that's kind of things you got to spend to to figure out you know what's going where. Um, but let's also keep the mindset here um, today that um, yep, it was it, this is a very fast turnaround. So we are we're we're kind of throwing a um, for lack of a better word or analogy a, a hail mary pass here at the end of the game. Um, we may not we very well may not get um, submitted you know or asked for a to to or awarded a grant. So you know we may just we may just have to come back next year, um, but we'll at least have a little more time to to think about it. But um, like again, I'm the I'm the co-conspirator that uh, that got uh, Harrison all fired up about doing this and uh, um, but uh, Sophie was uh, kind enough to uh, offer you know the services to you know get this thing submitted so um, we just want to just see if we can get a just see if we can get a good response and I think I, I will give hats off to Harrison and Sophie um, a Herculean effort in this amount of time um, really if you saw the whole package um, Pretty impressive what 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 kind of work went uh, went on here. Yeah, and thank you for that, Eric. Because none of this would be possible if you hadn't, um, you know, created kind of a, a work group to uh, to make this happen. I see a finger up over here. Too. Yeah. Um, of those twenty one letters, were any of those private landowners in support? No, that, the private private um, citizens were not asked. Um, because of the time frame. So what we were doing was basically asking um, uh, governmental entities and um, nonprofits have an interest in recreational opportunities in uh, in the region. One question I have, and I've forgotten to ask it three or four times already in the last half hour, is is the east end of this hard and fast at Vermillion or Clay County Park, or can it be extended to the east? All, all of Clay County and all of Yankton County. Because my favorite part of what we needed to do for a bike trail uh, in the master transportation plan was one from Vermillion to uh, uh, Burbank. So we as a county don't have somebody, one of those bikers going for uh, fish fry or spaghetti night between Vermilion and uh, Burbank get get hit by a car and we end up being complicit in it. I'd sure rather have that bike trail off in the ditch. And that's where my first uh, proposal would be, would be to uh, have a big bike trail between here and at least Burbank and if we could get uh, 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 Union County involved in it, run it clear to Point. Yeah, and I and I, I would and I would for safety's sake is what drives that thought. How is that different if we use gravel roads? Right now we're using Burbank Road de facto. No, but I, we've talked about using gravel roads to make these trails. Yeah. Well that's so one how of is the that safe safer than Burbank Road. 
due to the amount of traffic. The way they're traffic. the way the roads are built right now, none of them are safe for bike traffic. Correct. Yeah. And what I would do do is end up having a bike trail that would end up down the ditch, which would cause eminent domain unless you could get all those landowners to agree. Plus, utilities all have to be moved. In the it was yeah, on Burbank Road. What utilities would have to be moved? Water, electric, because they're all in the ditch. They're in the ditch. How is that going to inhibit uh, a bike trail? Well, if you're going to pave it, because otherwise it's going to be muddy. So if it's paved, you can't pave over. They're going to be tearing it up every time they'd have to do anything. Kind of like Burbank Road. Well, no, because nothing's under the road unless it goes side to side. Yeah, they do go side to side. We but, approve those and they all bore the time. that, and they bore that. Yeah. But if it's but, under the trail, then they have to dig it. No big deal to <laughs> ditch across it. No a big deal trail. if you don't have to pay for it. But. Yeah. Well, it. I think that's kind of a paper tiger you're you're tossing at us there. That's I don't, really. I don't think so. I know it is. I know it's not. I know the exact people you're dealing with, and it's not going to be fun. I'd rather I'd rather get that bike traffic off Burbank Road. Is my point. And it's uh, a safety issue. And like I say, it'd be the first bike trail that I would support is to get it off the road because it would be in the county's benefit to do that. And I would say the same thing about Timber. Timber Road, we actually have a citizen of Vermilion that was in a coma over a period of many, many days um, uh, because he was cycling to Clay County Park, which many, many people do, and uh, was hit by a car. And so we, we, we put the bike trail in the ditch and then we get drainage issues? Well, I think what we do is we ask um, well, the those consulting bike trails engineers are they to don't, design They don't it. affect the drainage, yeah. Dave. If you see ones where they've been put in, in road ditches before, the, there's really no physical difference other than it's uh, it's got a surface to, to bike on and sometimes an approach to uh, make it a little easier to go over side roads. But uh, that's something that's been done. And really, there's so you're no about drainage issues at all. So you bike trail there. not on a grade? No. So you're talking about the, the bottom part of the ditch? Yeah. And I, I, to me, that's an engineering question. Correct. Um, yeah. And and I, I I think that's the reason that we're doing the study. And, well, that's... and, and like I said, I'm not against this, but you know, all these questions is you know we do a, we do a bike trail on the bottom of the ditch. How many field approach and driveways are you going to go over? You know, are we going to blacktop those? And the guy drives his combine or tractor over it, or is you know busted up? Who's paying to fix it? I'm going to call question. All right, there's uh, the question is called, um, or I should say, all those in favor of calling the question at this point say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, then um, we are voting on um, resolution 2023 05. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Hey. Four to one, the motion carries. Thank you for a good discussion. Um, I, you know, I, I, I think all those things needed to be talked about, and I appreciate everyone's willingness to uh, to discuss it completely. Um, and uh, now we're on to Katie Redden, who's been sitting here for a long time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and uh, she's going to talk about the Joint Powers Landfill Leachate Pond proposal. Yeah, so for all of you that don't know me, I'm Katie Redden. I'm the finance officer for the city. Um, today we have the Ninth Amendment to the Joint Powers Agreement. Just a little bit of background on the Joint Powers is um, the cities of Vermilion, Yankton, the counties of Clay, and Yankton entered into this agreement in 1994. And since then, there has been eight amendments um, over that time period. There are 10, um, 10 members of the board and Vermilion and Yankton serve as secretary financial, the cities of Vermilion and Yankton um, serve as the secretary financial advisor for the board. Um, in 2020 and 2021, we um, constructed the cell six at the landfill. And since that construction, we need a, another leachate pond. So we applied for a grant 
for $1,043,200 that was approved by D Danner, D D E N R. Um, and in March, we are also applying for a grant application um, just to make sure that we don't have to pay off the, the entire $1 million. <laughs> Um, so what I have a, um, in front of you today is the Ninth Amendment, just stating that all four entities will stay into this um, joint powers agreement until all of the um, loan repayments are paid off. So I'm open to any questions, yeah. Where on the site is the pond going? Um, I believe it's right next to where the other Lee J pond is. And, and that's the, the pond that's up on the island on the east side of the landfill property. Yes. Yeah. Did uh, did we buy the farmland east of there? Am I correct in that or that didn't happen? We did. Nope. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> is there a motion to approve the change in the joint powers agreement? Yeah, to the amendment to the amendment powers, nine. Right? Mm -hmm. Move to approve the amendment to the joint powers of agreement. Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any further questions or discussion? And I don't know if you'll know this, but is there any guidelines on how far away from tile lines this leachate pond's got to be? I cannot know the answer to that. I can. Um, I don't know if Sophie can answer that because she's helping with this. So, could you repeat the question? I didn't quite hear it. Is there a minimum that the leachate pond has to be away from tile lines? Oh God, I would not know. Not that. Sorry about that. <laughs> that sounds like an engineering question. I I can ask our engineer and get back to you on that. Because the field to the east is completely tiled. Okay. I'll yeah. I'll I'll ask them and I'll maybe I'll carry. Other questions, discussion? I, I imagine we'll explore this further at the quarterly meeting then, uh, joint powers meeting. Yes, and that is the uh, 17th of March. Yeah. yeah. I guess I got to figure out where that's going to be. So I know it's in Yankton. It's at their city hall. Okay. So I think. Not too far from the church. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know very well. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. That police station. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, um, we're voting on the motion to approve um, Amendment 9 in the Joint Powers Agreement. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Um, and it looks like we've lost our EMS. I was wondering, was there an energy efficiency block grant to discuss as well? Yes. I know we did the DOT raise trails one, but I think that we no complaints about that. So we can let Katie get, <laughs> get out of here. But just wanted to make sure that um I I think I told you all that I had asked Sophie to see if that was something that um, CCOG could help with, and she did help put together um, the application, so we need approval for signature to apply for that $75,500. And we can do that now. Yep. Okay. It's on the agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And uh, let's see, vouchers? Move Everybody? to approve. Second. It's a motion to approve and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Um, any comments on the department? Uh, report that we reviewed. I think we just had the library library report. Looks like we got Matt Callahan back. We've got Matt Callahan oh, back. Callahan. Yeah. So we don't usually have to approve the reviews, do we? No. No. Uh, no. no. There's okay. no no formal. Just yeah. if people have questions. Um, 
and I think um, unless there's executive discussion, yeah, a personnel issue. Okay, um, and Matt, that's fine. I can go. I can wait. Well, how long? How long is it going to take? Ten or fifteen. It's one of those. All right. But you said you you have to leave here pretty quick, right? You never know. I'm <laughs> covered. I'm covered as the on call paramedic. So okay, I'm, I'm here and yeah. Okay. So so should we should we do the ambulance service now? Sure. Well, I think he wants to go, us to go outside, right? Well, and we can hang out upstairs as long as you know we don't catch a call. I mean, we can hang out. If you want me to go through whatever I want to talk about real fast, I can do that. And sure. We can hang out upstairs. We got a report and stuff to write. We can write a brief about them. Great. Do that. So. Okay. That's what, that's all right. Sounds good. Okay. Sorry, we had to dart out. Um, it's becoming more and more occurrence that I'm not making meetings. Um, but uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I've got a couple new uh, commission members. Uh, my name is Matt Callahan. I'm the chief of fire EMS uh, for city of Vermilion uh, and uh, kind of playing multiple roles here covering as the on-call paramedic as well today. Uh, but uh, a couple things uh, that we just wanted to uh, discuss with you and then allow you to see the ambulance uh, that's in service finally uh, and uh, that uh, you guys purchased in January. Uh, one of the things we wanted to talk to you guys about uh, and just make, a, make you aware of is the uh, ambulance coverage to Northern Clay County. Um, two agencies co currently cover Northern Clay County. Uh, that's Centerville and Beersford. Uh, Yankton County covered the city of Irene up until July of last year uh, when Highway 46 went under construction and they closed it. Uh, Yankton then turned over covering the city of Irene to Viberg and Centerville, uh, and they have not been responding there since. Uh, these agencies that have since taken that on, uh, we have found out, have very limited staffing. Uh, Viberg has three members uh, on their departments. Centerville has 10 uh, with only two available during the day. And so uh, they're staffing uh, to take on uh, Irene, uh, which also has a nursing home, uh, can be extremely taxed at times. Uh, the nursing home averages alone about 60 calls a year uh, in that uh, area. So we just wanted to make you aware of uh, what was going on uh, in the northern part of Clay County. Uh, right now, we don't uh, think there's anything that the commission needs to act on or do. Uh, we are uh, actively meeting with those agencies to try to help them come up with a solution uh, to their staffing. Uh, Division Chief Clunder has been heading that up. He just had his first meeting with them on Thursday, uh, more of a meet and greet and to hear what their troubles and, um, uh, are, and things that they're facing. Uh, and so... <clears throat> You know, the question was brought up, uh, did we want to absorb that and take on Irene? Um, I, we don't think that's a fair answer for the folks of Irene for us to just take it on. That means they're going back to, you know, 30 to 40 minute wait times for an ambulance. Uh, but uh, sometimes they are waiting a very long time for Viberg and Centerville because they're having trouble crewing up. So the temporary arrangement that we've come up with uh, is that it. Viberg and Centerville are paged by, they're, they're dispatched by Lincoln County. Uh, and so if at 20 minutes uh, from the time of the call, they cannot get a crew, they're going to have us dispatched um, and still continue to try to get a crew. Uh, and they can call us off if they get a crew and get there. Uh, but at least we can get going and get heading towards Irene uh, or that area of Northern Clay County where Centerville uh, also services. Uh, and so we're working on a plan or solution. Um, I don't think there's any immediate um, solution to it. Uh, this is a nationwide issue. Uh, this isn't just Clay County. This is nationwide. Uh, staffing of fire departments and ambulances uh, has become very difficult. And it's really started to show its uh, ugly head uh, in South Dakota in the last year or two, uh, especially since COVID, unfortunately. So uh, any questions on that? Uh, I know there probably could be a litany and I might not have answers to them at this point. Okay. 
Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about uh, is ambulance replacement, just to kind of put it on the back burner. And you're probably like, well, we just bought an ambulance two months ago. Why are we talking about ambulance replacement? Um, for a very good reason. Um, currently, we replace an ambulance every five years. Uh, we have three ambulances, so they last 15 years currently. Um, and so what we're finding, though, is our call volumes increased in the last 10 years, our call volumes doubled. Uh, and so we are running anywhere from about 1,000 to 1,100 calls a year. About 300 of those are inter-facility transfers from the hospital here in town to Sioux Falls, majority of them. Uh, and so that puts a lot of wear and tear on the truck. Uh, currently, the 2013 ambulance that we have, so that would be the next one that would be replaced in five years. That ambulance currently has 125,000 miles on it. Uh, we've had issues with the DEF system on it. Uh, about twice a winter, it goes down to Chevrolet in Sioux City, gets the DEF system worked on, gets parts changed out on it. Um, it's uh, it, it it's, has its issues. At the going rates of what you know mileage per year we've put on that truck, when that truck retires, it'll be somewhere around 187,000 miles. Uh, the 2017 that we bought five years ago uh, already has 78,000 miles on it. Um, at that rate, it'll be about 234,000 on it before it's retired. Uh, and so uh, obviously we just took delivery of a new one um, a couple months ago. And so what I would ask the commission to um, look at, uh, obviously there, you, there, we don't have to make a decision today uh, and we can definitely have further discussions on this, would be to look at potentially reducing the amount of years between purchases. Um, and to start by going with this next one down to four years from now instead of five to try to help reduce the uh, wear and tear uh, on the truck and the amount of money that uh, ends up being put in in the last five years of having that vehicle um, into um, to keep it uh, in serviceable use. Um, and so that would make uh, the next ambulance, if that was the, the, the case, was to go four years that would put delivery in the first first uh, first semester, first quarter of 2027. Now that may seem like a long ways away, but speaking with the ambulance vendors, if you don't own a chassis or have one on order currently, the lead time for an ambulance is 36 months and growing. So that would mean we would be ordering, placing an order for 2027 in early 2024. Not the greatest news, I know, um, but fire trucks are just as bad. They're two plus years now. Um, the one that we ordered last January, uh, 13, 14 months ago, uh, is finally in production. And hopefully we'll have that after 16 to 17 months of waiting. Uh, and so um, the prices continue to grow on these. Um, my estimate on a price of a new ambulance four years from now would be, we paid two, about right about 250. I don't have the exact figure, but it was right about 250. Uh, for this last one, uh, would be probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 300000 for a similar truck, for a very similar truck. So um, I'll answer uh, what, whatever questions you might have, or uh, we can have a discussion on it later. I just wanted to bring that to your attention so that you can uh, ponder it and uh, you have that uh, in the back of your mind uh, as we move forward. So. So it's the truck itself or switching out the the ambulance body are those holding up pretty well uh they tend to um if we're to do the remounts um i would personally feel looking at longevity i would i would if we replace them on a faster rotation um say we got down to you know every three years we were purchasing a truck we could buy a new one nine years later send it back to the manufacturer that built it, have them remove it, put a new chassis underneath it, run that nine more years. So we got 18 years on the box, nine years out of each two out of two chassis. Um, you know, you save four, I'm probably insert my foot on this one because it'll probably change by the time we won't, there won't be much savings, but on average, you can save somewhere between 35 to $50,000 uh, remounting it. But taking a 15 year old box, putting it on a new chassis, running it 15 more years. Um, one of the things you lose is the safety enhancements that came out in 15 years. 
Uh, I mean, you'll notice when you look at the new ambulance upstairs, uh, when your meeting's over, um, just the seat belts alone that are in the back, we used to have just lap belts. Now we have almost NASCAR five point restraint systems that we can stand up and move and still be wearing, still be belted in in the truck. And they're putting airbags in the back of these uh, units and things like that. So uh, you tend to lose a lot of the safety features. The newest one you're having deaf problems with now. Is that more of a Chevy deaf problem or is that... the 2013? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a Chevy deaf problem, a Chevrolet deaf problem. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's had deaf issues for about the last three to four years. Yeah. Um, and we continue to have those, um, and, and once it goes down and they can force it into regen and they replace a part or whatever, yeah. it'll run fine for three, four months. And then, and it seems to be always in the winter time, November to February, that it ends up down at Chevrolet. Never in the summertime. I don't. Know, it's weird, but, um, but you know, typically when it goes down there, it's nine hundred or a thousand dollars every time it goes. Yeah, uh, to have it done because they have to force it. Most of the time, deaf problems too are related to idle time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if you're driving down the road, they'll go forever. Uh, you yep. have a significant idle time. You do, I'm sure. Yeah, in in our in the two pickup truck style ones, uh, we we can force them into high idle, yeah. and so they'll run at about 1500 RPMs, uh, and so that's that's better on it. Uh, and the pickup truck ones, the two pickup trucks we have now, the 2017 and the 2022, when you're as you're driving them, it's con some of the older ones like the 2013. It wants it's almost completely full. The exhaust fuel, it, the def is almost full and then it wants to clean it and it'll take 20 to 30 minutes driving it to clean it the new ones they will they they get up to about 60 percent, and then they'll come back down to about 30 and they're constantly doing small regens uh and we don't we haven't seen a big regen on on those yet where it'll sit and just need to be drove for 20 30 minutes so we're actually having much better luck uh with the pickup truck the ford pickup trucks so it isn't something you'd end up wanting to switch back to gasoline which I much prefer diesel myself. We but. we had um, we had talked about switching back to gasoline with this one that we bought. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem was was we couldn't get a gasoline, and there was no ETA on a gas, and they had twelve diesels available. Yeah, and so we took the diesel. Uh, but as long as we stay with the pickup truck, um, you know, we we've had good luck with the Ford pickup truck. Yeah. Did we trade the old one in? Is that what happened? We did. The old one we traded, um, it was almost, we almost needed to pull the plug in the ICU on that baby because uh, we had it pieced together for about the last three weeks uh, with the electrical issues we were having. The whole electrical panel in the back uh, was going out piece by piece. Uh, the problem was that company went out of business 10 years ago and you can't find an electrical panel to replace it with. And so, um, we have uh, we have some good mechanics here in the city, and we have some good contacts at ambulance manufacturers that were able to tell us how to bypass stuff uh, to keep it going. Uh, and so, yes, it was uh, traded, and we loaded it onto a semi and waved goodbye as it drove out of the parking lot. So, yeah, I remember your update on that about a year ago. Yeah, it's uh, about the last two months. It was pretty rough with it. It was in and out of the shop. Um, something always constantly cutting out, going out, tripping, things like that. So, well, other thank you. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it sounds like something we'll follow up on around budget time. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you have questions, uh, feel free email me. Uh, we can set up another meeting to talk uh, or whatnot and discuss it and things like that. So, all right. Great. All right. Thank, thank you. you. So, we should just come upstairs. Yeah, we're With right you. out back, right outside the Sally Port okay. Police Department. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Katie. Thanks for your patience. Yeah, do you, did you sign things yet or not? Not yet. But not oh, yet. Okay. Here. Yeah, well, I'll just get them to you later. All right. Um, so I think the last thing. Do you have anything else on the agenda besides executive session? And those guys are here for our computers. They're going to oh, get us two factored after the meeting's done. Yeah. yeah. So, so you'll have to, I'm sorry to say, you'll have to leave just for a few minutes while we have an executive session. Can you work on these now without us? 
no oh. thing to be reviewed. We're also going to set up what's called one password manager, which has been adopted by the AGI Clay County Courthouse. It's a password manager. So um, if you do have any spreadsheets of passwords, we're going to have to have a hard conversation today if those need to go away. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. DSU found a couple of those when they did their audit on it. And uh, we need to get rid of those. All right, fair, fair enough. So we'll 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 come get you in a few minutes. All right. Can you um shut the door on the way out? Thank you. Thank you so much. So they're storing their passwords on their computer. That's what it sounds like in a spreadsheet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. What Thanks. good would that do? I need to or remember the password to get onto the computer. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. Excuse me. All right. No. So um. So move to go into executive session. A second. Motion and a second to go into executive session. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, we're going to executive. Move to come out of executive session. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we are in the regular meeting now. Any other agenda items? Move to adjourn. Second. All right, there's a motion and a second to adjourn. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Well, Thank you. Next week, guys. Yeah. For computers.